Hello and welcome to Cases from the Coop, an educational ultrasound from Cooper University Hospital. Hi, my name is Sarab Sodi and I am the current ultrasound fellow. So we're going to discuss a case today. A 30-year-old male was sent in for evaluation of asymptomatic hypertension. When he was questioned further, he ended up revealing that he'd been having daily morning headaches with vomiting uh, for the last few months that had been getting steadily worse for the last couple of weeks. Given this setting, there was a concern for elevated intracranial pressure, and after an initial workup didn't show any other findings, we decided to try to evaluate to see whether he had idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So, since this is an ultrasound podcast and my fundoscopic skills aren't great, one of the things we're going to discuss today is how to do an ocular ultrasound to look for elevated, intraocular, ele elevated intracranial pressure. So first, let's talk through some anatomy. So in this image from IEM, it shows you nicely what the ultrasound of an eye looks like. Since the eye contains a lot of fluid, you get a lovely medium for ultrasound beams to travel through. So first and foremost, you can see that there's skin and soft tissue up here. There is a cornea, there's, there's your iris, there's the lens. Anterior to the lens is the anterior chamber. Posterior to the lens is the posterior chamber. And you have the retina and the optic nerve. Now, at that area of the optic nerve is where you would look to see whether or not there was optic nerve sheath diameter um, elevation. So there's two ways you can attempt to do an ocular ultrasound, and to some degree this is style and debated. Um, either way, a large quantity of gel is required so that you can put minimal pressure on the eye itself. The way you can do this is by either directly applying a bunch of gel right on top of the eye and then putting the probe right on top of it, or putting some sort of protective mechanism like a piece of tegaderm over the eye. Now the rationale for the tegaderm is that um, ultrasound gel, while not caustic, can be very irritating for the eye and can cause a nasty chemical conjunctivitis. However, on the other hand, a lot of people are concerned because when you put tegaderm on, there are people who feel as though that removes eyelashes. So I offer the patient the choice between the two so that they can decide depending on what their values are. The other thing to note is that if you've seen both of these images, the physician performing the ultrasound is holding pressure, is taking most of the pressure of the ultrasound off the eye itself by bracing their finger either behind on the patient's skull or on the patient's nose. All right, so here's what the images look like for our patient. As you can see, you start by fanning through in short axis, and you can see up there is your iris, you can, you can see the cornea, there's the lens, there is the uh, anterior and posterior chambers, and then very briefly down here, all the way up there, you see what looks like the optic nerve. Now, to find the optic nerve, you occasionally have to have the patient move their eyes left and right to try to get it to come into the middle of the screen. Um, as a reminder, what you're trying to do is measure the optic nerve sheath diameter. Now, that is a measurement which starts at the posterior part of the retina, right at the fovea, and you measure three millimeters behind the optic nerve uh, entry point, and then you measure across. So this is what that measurement looks like. You come back and you start off three millimeters behind, and then you're measuring the entire width of what looks like an optic nerve sheath. You're looking to see whether or not that is above 0.5 centimeters. If it averages out to above 0.5 centimeters, and most textbooks recommend that you do this multiple times, as a matter of fact, um, the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine published a meta-analysis in 2015 that suggested that if you have multiple measurements above 0.5 centimeters averaged out between the two eyes, that had a 92% sensitivity and a 93% specificity uh, or so to ensure that someone had elevated intracranial pressure. And then you measure the same thing on the other eye. And then as you can see, once you're done with all of this, you can make your measurement. Now, our patient, as you saw from all of those numbers, had a average optic nerve sheath diameter in the 0 0.57, 0 0.58 range, which meant that the next diagnostic test to perform was a lumbar puncture. And after that lumbar puncture was done, there was an opening pressure of 35, which was consistent with idiopathic intracranial hypertension. And the patient was discharged on appropriate therapy with the appropriate follow-up. As always, feel free to ask any questions or concerns directly or by Twitter at CooperEMUS. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.